Hi everyone, welcome back to Gold Fries. In this video, we have this beautiful looking affordable motherboard for the Intel system, LGA1700 socket that has DDR5. Now, have you seen an affordable board with DDR5? I haven't until this one came along. So this is the ASRock H610M HDV M.2 Plus DDR5. A step up from their existing model, which is the ASRock H610M HDV M.2. So, um, this one, right? Basically, compared to the R2.0, is, as you can see, white colored and there's a bunch of other difference and amazingly it comes at the same price point you can browse online on places like shopee and this board retails at just rm369 and you can get combo with i3 cpus for under 1000 malaysian ringgits which means us dollars is about what 230 so something very interesting so in this video, we'll go into more details like who won an entry-level board with DDR5. But before we get into that, let's head over to the overhead camera and I'll go through a bit of details on what this board has to offer. Now looking through the eyes of the overhead camera, you can see that it is a board that is entirely white PCB that I know reflect to the light, it literally blends into the table which is white in color. White color PCB, it has DDR5 over here, M.2 slot over here, and compared to the R2.0, now it comes with ARGB header again, and then at the rear, it has USB Type-C instead of Type-A's and no Type-C, so that's pretty much that. Basically, like the H610M HDV M.2 R2.0, but better for the appearance, DDR5 and ERGB header and with the Type-C. And let's head over to the frontal camera. Alright, and here we are again, front facing, and let's have a look at this beautiful bar again. So, with that said, diving into the benchmark will be the next logical step. So in this, uh, let me brief you a bit on my setup. I'm using an Intel Core i3-12100F for this combo, which I think is the choice. After all, using an i5K series CPU or i7 with something with no VRM is going to impact the performance. I personally do not recommend it. So we stick to the i3. The comparison system is using the same CPU, but it uses DDR4. Now, the difference is here is that this board, while it runs DDR5, it does not let you load XMP. So the memory is running at 4800 MHz CL40, while the other system is using a 3600 MHz CL18 that's with XMP loaded. Now, why this? Why am I running one with XMP and one without? Obviously, this one is without XMP. The other one is because it's a DDR4 system. DDR4 costs less for the same capacity. Therefore, the money can be channeled to, let's say, a B660 board where you can select the XMP so that you understand for the same price point, what do you get? So despite being of a disadvantage uh, running XMP, I'm so happy to report that the performance difference is very minimal. Check out the benchmark results over here you see that in every test, the gap is so little, although slightly higher on the DDR4 part, it's pretty much like a runtime difference, so you will not see any actual difference in your gaming experience, except for one outlier, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now for this benchmark, I'm running using the RTX 3060 Ti GDDR6, which I think is probably the highest end of cards that people would run with this kind of system. Of course, there's a 4060, which I don't have, which I think is of a similar performance level. And based on this chart alone, you can more or less guess how it will perform from anything like 4060 to down to 3050. And the difference will be lesser when you go down the stack, while the difference might be more when you go higher up the stack, which 
Unlikely, I think anyone's going to use like say 4070 and above on a system like this. When you're on 4070, then you'll be gaming at a higher resolution, then the gap might be uh, non-existent at all too. So, who is this board for? What I feel is that if you are if you are looking for something that's as low a price as possible, clearly the DDR4 option is a choice. But if you are someone who wants DDR5, newer technology, ma, right? So you can go with this one actually. In fact, um, one possible case is that let's say your board is broken, and you think that it's pointless to spend on a DDR4 board. So you go with a DDR5 board, sell off your DDR4, and get a DDR5 to prepare for the next actual upgrade. Or in another case, is where you manage to score a very good price for DDR5, then who knows, you manage to get a really good price, so, and you so happen to be getting a new system, but couldn't afford going, let's say, to an AM5 system just yet, because it costs a lot more, then you can spend on this one, it will definitely be able to fulfill most, if not all, of your gaming needs. So I think this is definitely something you can consider. In fact, when I was um, uh, speaking to some dealers, um, doing some market research before it came, I found out there's actually two interesting ways of thought when it comes to this board. On one camp, there will be those who want to um, offer lowest price possible systems, then this does not make sense. Why would you want to introduce DDR5 into a system? Regardless of how beautiful it looks, DDR5 will raise the price. Therefore, it does not make it competitive, does not make sense because the general people who are looking at something of this price point, this kind of setup, would want to keep the cost low. Makes absolute sense. Then again, there's the other group of people who find it other ways. And this other group, one is like things that this is DDR5, you can generate topic to talk to your customers. It's something that it can make you be very different from the rest. Everyone is offering DDR4, but now you offer DDR5. Top up a bit, higher technology, newer, faster, more bandwidth. I mean, as dealers who clearly they are selling, so this is the, the time when you can upsell to system with DDR5. It can be a gen, uh, this something of um, discussion you can generate you know make it interesting yes so the so yeah two two ways of thoughts one i want it low the other one is something different i can the market is very stale i have something very different to offer newer technology nicer something you don't want ddr4 already old thing this is ddr5 better technology right so Two ways to go about, none of them are wrong, it just depends on how you want to target your, how you want to direct your customers. Either way, I think if definitely this is not, not a bad board, in fact, I think it's a good option. If you, if someone is looking for DDR5 affordable setup to later jump, uh, and I, I just won't go through that, I'll give you the example, use cases already. So overall, nice board. Definitely something to consider. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do remember to subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys in the next one and bye bye.